Do all executives read Save the Cat? I'm going to say no, based on what I've seen. Uh, they should. Um, it's a good book. Uh, look, I, it wasn't a text that I had in grad school. Um, I love the techniques of screenwriting or Eugene Bale's, you know, Bale's techniques of screenwriting, um, the art of dramatic writing by Leos Egri, um, even Aristotle's Poetics. You know, they're the books we were given. Save the Cat was a much more modern take on, you know, a, a modern structure for a screenplay. And I really liked it. I like that, I like the way that it's put together. Um, I don't think Blake's with us anymore, but uh, I did, it's a tough tone at times. It can be a little, you know, cowboyish in the way that it's presented. But the way he's broken up the segments of a screenplay and identified the big beats in the screenplay and also put in some um, understanding of the industry. You know, it's not just a book about writing a screenplay. It gives you a little bit of insight into what it was like to try and sell a screenplay and what that means. And I think you know, when I'm teaching screenwriting, because of the amount of time I've spent in a studio, you know, in developing and producing and, and, uh, and acquiring content, uh, I try to teach the industry and not just the craft. Because, you know, even in grad school at AFI, it was very much a, an immersive, here's the craft. This is the craft of filmmaking. These are the collaborations that are important. These is how they work. Here's how to do a screenplay, um, all that kind of stuff. I didn't really get a lot of the look at, well, okay, that's great. I have a screenplay. Now what? What do I do with it? You know, that needs to come before the idea is put into, you know, you should know a little bit about where your idea fits and how the business works. And so I try to, I, I teach that when I'm teaching screen screenwriting. And I think that's important. It's not something that I, even when I was doing media in an undergrad setting, you know, you learn all the specifics about the craft. But, but there's, I mean, in a grad course like I did, is there enough room to teach about the business? Um, no. And so when my schedule became a little more flexible, I went and got a temp job in a studio just to see how things worked. Because a friend of mine suggested doing that and he worked at Sony. Um, and that's how I ended up getting kind of recruited out of there as I started in when they used to have a temp pool, um, is that I got to know some people and how the business worked while I was actually learning, continuing to learn about the craft in my second year. Um, but I think that's the one thing that I wish had there had been more of. Well, that's fascinating. So you didn't really get it from an alumni connection. It was through these temp jobs. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I could have, could I have done that? Could I have uh, gone and looked for, you know, we had a mentor system, but gone and worked with them. I mean, most people, and I'm generalizing a little bit, but most people who become TV writers, for instance, come up through the writer's assistant ranks, you know, and come up through you know, getting coffee all the way through to the writer's room and learning about how they work and the mechanics of that and the development of story that way from a mentor system. Um, when you're in a film school, uh, it's a little isolated and you're in a bubble, so you're learning the craft, but you're not exposed as much to the business unless you become proactive yourself. And I knew that I had to because I didn't know anyone. You know, I, I'm from the theatre, so I'm trying to convert that knowledge into an understanding of writing for film and TV. And so I wanted to learn about how the business worked and turns out I turned that into a career. <laughs> Has Save the Cat ruined, in a sense, the movie industry? Oh, that's a big one. I'm going to have to say no. No, it hasn't. Um, I think it's given a unique perspective on structure um, on a simplistic level to people who might not be screenwriters, you know, studio executive, network executives. Um, if you're willing to have a look at how something works and, and how it's generated, and how it elicits a response from an audience and a marketing perspective. I've only read the first one. I think there's another couple of Save the Cats that have come out. I've never read those, but I liked this one. And, you know, I, I have, you know, taken from it because there are, there are kind of ideal, you know, beats in it that do work. And you can lay those templates over some of the greater films, you know, and I, I try to do that in my classes as well, not from Save the Cat, but you know, from those models. Um, but when you look at uh, Leos Egri's kind of, uh, his take on character 
and how where he believed character comes from. Um, Eugene Vale's book, The Techniques of Screenwriting, um, they do cover the same ground. Um, but Save the Cat is a little more modern in its approach, I think. Um, and I, I liked the book. You know, I think it has a lot to say about structure. Um, can you work outside of structure? Sure, of course you can. I don't know how you do that though until you know structure first. So the idea of working against structure, um, even you know, movies like Memento, which have a very strange kind of structure to them, they still work inside a three act structure that you can lay over it that has big beats that elicit a response in that moment. And I think that's the value of, the biggest value of Save the Cat for me is really honing and defining what each of those segments is between those big beats. You know, that setup. You know, the opening and closing image of a film. How important are they? You know, for instance, if you lay that over the apartment, Billy Wilder, which is one of my favourite movies of all time, um, you'll see in the opening shot, it's, an outs it's, a, it's a picture of the outside of the apartment building. It's very cold, it's very kind of clinical, you know, it's very rigid. But in the closing, in the closing shot of the apartment, it's, it's inside the apartment with, with Jack Lemmon and Shirley MacLaine and they've found each other, you know, and they're together and there's a warmth to it. There's a contrast in those bookends. Um, and I think it was reading Save the Cat and having a look at that structure and the importance of those moments and how they show a character arc when you, when you bookend them like that. Um, does that happen in every movie? No, not necessarily. But a lot of the a lot of them, a lot of the good ones. Um, and the importance of the setup section, the debate section in between the inciting incident and the end of Act One. What's going on there? What's supposed to happen there? You know. Um, the fun and game section where most act big action pieces happen in between the midpoint and the first act. And then his bad guys closing in, you know, towards the end of the second act. I found all all of that. I knew the information, but the way that he put it was very succinct and very accessible. Why do you think the book is so polarizing? We see it in our comments, we hear it from people in person, they either love it or intensely dislike it. Yeah, I think that's just opinion. Um, you would have to go to each one of them and say, why? Why? Why are you commenting on this book? Um, I think that, you know, we want what we do sometimes to be complex. You know, there is, we want it to be inaccessible. I don't want everyone to know how to do this. Um, but the fact is that if you work hard enough and you, you learn, you can do it on a certain level. Um, you know, uh, I think that is polarizing because for me, if I was to offer that opinion, which is all it would be, because I don't know what everyone thinks, but it does have a certain tone to it that, that could read as arrogant, you know, um, and you'll hear that every now and then. But it's only because Blake Snyder and his partner really did go through the mud of how do I get a film made? You know, how do I sell a screenplay? What does it take? You know, um, and I think, I think it's that, you know, is, 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 there, is a, there is a tone to it and I picked up on it. But again, I can only offer my opinion on that. I don't know why it's polarizing. All I know is I read it a number of times and I got little things out of it that I incorporated into my own process you know, because I found it useful based on my own knowledge. I think anyone who wants, you know, the book banning in this country needs to stop. So should we take all Save the Cats out and burn them because you don't like them? I don't right. think so. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, bully for you. Read something else. Um, but I think it does have something to offer if you really look into it because Blake had a really good career in the industry and you can't deny that. Um, but at the same time, there is a, a confidence in the tone with which he puts it forward. And I think that can, that can kind of put up a wall for people. Um, it, it's, it's not overly friendly to our current pronoun environment, for instance. And I think a lot of books are like that. Um, people are a lot more aware of that now, um, as they should be. Uh, but I think that, you know, that and even if you go back to some of the more classic books, the Robert McKees and that, you, you'll find the pronouns are a wall. Um, and I think maybe it's that too.